That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, everybody, to a what happens when somebody jumps off a cruise ship at full speed in the middle of the night, in the middle of the ocean. I wish I didn't have the answer to that, but unfortunately, I do edition of the Always Interstate Show. As always, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet. It's a new channel trying to grow it. That helps. Uh, Thumbs up helps as well in the algorithm. That's beautiful too. Notifications on. You know why. That way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. You don't want to miss it. So here's the deal. I promise you guys interesting. That doesn't always mean it's the most uh, rejoiceful things to talk, talk about. Sometimes things that are interesting or, or darker things that you may be curious about or wonder about in your life and never have the answers to. Those are interesting too, just in a totally different way. So the title of this is, what happens when somebody jumps off a cruise ship full speed in the middle of the night, in the middle of the ocean? Unfortunately, I have experienced this and it ain't pretty. It isn't pretty. So let me get into it. And a lot of people ask me, since it was on the new, the ship I was on was on the news and everything when all this happened. And all my football people want to know, because I had to take a break from recording my football program to go on this cruise. And then they see on TV, somebody jumped off. Anyways, I experienced this. And so I'm just going to tell you kind of how this looks and goes. If you're ever in this position, what you could expect. Hopefully you're not in this position. So it's about, let's see, Royal Caribbean, a few, a handful of years ago. I don't know what ship, one of the big ones, the floating cities, not like one of these little overnight thing. One of the full bore Royal Caribbean, you know, takes up a city block, 12 story things, 3000 something guests, like one of the big boys, right? So this ended up being a complete nightmare in so many different ways. So that's the setup. Okay. Picture this. It's one of them like, you know, uh, week, full week cruises. You go to a different port every day and hang out, blah, 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 blah. So you do that for a week. It's 11 o'clock, the last night of the cruise. This is important to the whole story and why it got so messed up. That means since it's the last night, Overnight, the boats going from whatever island we were overnight while you're sleeping. And then they dock in Fort Lauderdale at 5 or 6 a.m. And then everybody deboards. And then 90% of them go right to the Fort Lauderdale airport, get on a plane, go back to their miserable cold lives somewhere. That's how these go. And that's what you do. Okay. So that's the normal dynamic when you do the last overnight. That's a big deal. It's got to be on time, be at that dock to let people get out so everybody could go catch their flights. They tell you, don't book an early morning flight because if the boat's delayed for any reason, you're, you're in a bad spot then. But you're also not going to give yourself a nine-hour window of like nothing to do sitting there if you don't have to. And the odds are that those boats are on time most of the time. So that's kind of the dynamic there. Since it's the final night of the trip, it was generally pretty quiet. Uh, some people were still partying out on the decks and out on the bars and, and whatever. But there was a vibe like trips over. Most people were going to bed early, packing to get ready for the travel day the next day that everybody was going to have somewhere. So this wasn't like, Night one or two, everybody's looking to party and make moves out on the deck and relax and everything. No. Uh, so that wasn't that. My girlfriend was sleeping in the room or the cabin, whatever they call it. And she wants to get a good night's sleep. She goes to bed sooner than me. I'm a night owl. So I'm out walking around on the deck with a beer and a cigar, enjoying the crisp ocean saltwater air and all that. Minding my own business, just walking around, having my drink, whatever. I go near the main party bar area. 
which is the 10th floor, I believe, with like an outdoor cool bar, patio area theme, you know, DJ or whatever. I look over and I hear this commotion, just like a group of people yelling and it just sounds like general chaos or panic, but I can't understand any actual words, but I just see commotion. And then I hear screaming and I look over and out of the corner of my eye, everybody's like in a total panic, screaming at the top of their lungs, absolutely freaking out. So it went from like a general commotion that I didn't know exactly what it was to a commotion that told me this is total panic. Like absolute people are screaming and shrieking. Something bad just happened. Okay. So I run over there. And and there's a bunch of people freaking out. And it's obvious this guy just jumped off the 10th floor deck. Us going full speed in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the night. So this was not an accident. There was like a confrontation with family. And the guy apparently was like, I, I don't care. I'm done with this. And jumped and was threatening to jump. And then, and then he jumped. Okay. Keep in mind. 10th story of this thing moving full speed in the ocean at 11 at night. That's the dynamic we're dealing with here of him jumping off. This isn't like from the bottom floor, 10 feet into the water. No. 10th deck, full speed, pitch black of night, middle of the ocean, no land around. Now what happens? This is where it gets interesting. Now what happens? All right. Within one minute, this entire floating city made a huge U-turn in the middle of the ocean. I mean, floating city that it's about a city block is how big this boat is. That thing put on the brakes, banked and made a total horseshoe U-turn in the middle of the ocean in under a minute. You could feel the brakes. You could feel like the power of this ship and those engines. You just knew something was going on. So we'd make this huge U-turn bank out of nowhere in this huge ship, okay? I'm sure everybody felt it. I don't know how you couldn't. Even if you were sound asleep, there's no way you could sleep through this. The whole thing was leaning and breaking and making noise like you knew something serious was going on. So then we do the U-turn and kind of come to a stop facing the way we just came from where theoretically that guy is there, right? And we're facing where he would have been. Within, I'd say, two to three minutes, the captain comes on the radio that, that announces things to the entire ship. And he says, man overboard, we need everybody to go to the nearest balcony to see if you could spot this guy now. So everybody does that. Now the entire ship is aware of everything. The entire ship knows now because it's over the radio. We banked and stopped. Everybody had to know something was up, even if you weren't right there to see what happened like I was and know why we were doing this. So then the captain says, everybody go to the balcony, have your life jacket. If you see the guy, throw your life jacket in, save his life, basically. That's when the panic set in. People were just throwing their life jackets over the every balcony. There was just hundreds of them as far as you could see in the water with a little beacon just floating around. Throwing those circles with the rope, like the lifeguard thing at the YMCA with the circle and the rope. And you, somebody, people are throwing those in the water. They have huge banks of stadium lights that as backups, I think, for the ship. But then they pull those up, face them in the direction, and then it's like football stadium lights with the big bulbs, and it's a big bank of them. So they pulled those out. Then they had workers in these little dinghies with a little motor, like you would fish in a pond, out in the ocean. And these guys are bobbing around in the waves trying to find this guy. Listen, there's no sign of this guy. He was dead or unconscious right when he hit the water from the tent deck at full speed going down into the ocean like that. 
I think he was either passed away or unconscious when he hit the water or when he hit the water, sucked under the boat, into the propulsion, shark chum, and it, and that was it. That was it. That, that's what I think. Because this guy was nowhere to be found. No, nobody ever saw him again. He was nowhere to be found. And we were right where he jumped one minute later. He wasn't bobbing around out there. No, this guy was gone. So everybody's panicking now. People are crying. Like, it's just heavy stuff to be like on your vacation. You know, this guy just died in front of you. Like, it's just kind of awkward. Less awkward for me than others. I got over 10 years of clinical grief counseling experience. So some vacation for me, I want to get away from death for a week. And then I end up talking to the people that were there, their family and their friends, and they're all panicking. And then I'm getting into work mode, trying to be compassionate and calm them down. Um, so it wasn't really a vacation from the death that I was hoping it was going to be. So everybody's panicking. Then what? The next step is. The large cruise ship can't move it till the Coast Guard arrives to take over the investigation. Helicopter arrives from, I don't know, either Florida or the Keys, somewhere like that. They were there in under an hour, but that's just the helicopter. Our big ship could move till boats were there floating around in that area and then pick up the family or the people involved. So the helicopter was there in under an hour, but the boats take many, many hours to get there. So all of this in between time, we're just bobbing around in the ocean looking for this guy and like he's nowhere to be found and we're just bobbing around and everybody's upset. After hours and hours of this panic and no Coast Guard boat able to get there yet, people started giving up and going to sleep or starting to wonder what's going to happen next. Because if we are a full half day, eight or nine hours late getting back to Fort Lauderdale, almost everybody on this 3,000 person ship's missing their flight home somewhere else out of Fort Lauderdale. All right. So some people were just upset, went to bed, deal with it in the morning. But other people like me wound a little tight about your travel plans, wanting to know, when is this boat going to get going? Are we going to make our flight? Even if you paid for the Wi-Fi out in the middle of this boat in the ocean, it doesn't work reliably. So there was no good way to really adjust your flight, check your flight. No good way to touch base with people at home on land and let them know there is an issue here. You know, something's going on, but I'm okay. You were getting no information from the cruise line. There's 500 Karens in line at the front desk of this cruise demanding answers. When is this boat going to start moving? What hour will it be in Fort Lauderdale? How are we all supposed to get off this boat, get where we're going if we're eight hours late and 3,000 people missed their flight off and nobody can even change their plans to adjust? So, we got no information, no details. There's Karens out the wazoo mad because we couldn't get any answers or information. So it was just the weirdest vibe. Like you felt this weird darkness knowing this guy just died, but also everybody's practically annoyed in their own situation that, that we trips over. Now we just want to get home and we couldn't. So everybody was dealing with that all night till the sun comes up. Missed flight central, like it was bad. You get to Fort Lauderdale, get off the boat finally. There's news crews everywhere wanting to interview anybody who saw anything and what happened. 3,000 people missed their flights. Then everybody got to the airport at the same time, miserable. And then all those lines and everything moved from the boat to the airport. It was just a total nightmare. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm staying away from cruises for a while. All it takes is one guy to decide they want to end it. And then it becomes every 3,000 other people's life problem. 
And that's just a lot of shared responsibility. Just, you know, I feel bad for the guy. Apparently it came out later. I read a news article. This guy was a heavy drinker and was allegedly cleaning up. And then the family couldn't find him that night. And then they found him all messed up, belly up to the bar and said, oh, Tim, I thought you quit drinking. And then he goes, oh, you know what? No, I didn't. I'm sick of you guys bugging me about it. And then jumped off the boat. Jumped right off. So not an ideal situation. But if you're kind of wondering how that goes and how it looks, there's a breakdown for you. It is not very pretty. And it's just very helpless. You look out there at that deep, dark, black, big ocean. And you just know there's nothing you could do. And it's more powerful than humans. And we got to respect it as such. Uh, but if anybody's wondering what happens when this happens, that's what happened. And it was not pretty. I don't know. I don't recommend it.